New York City. Fierce, racy, and rich in some quarters. Once home to two billionaire businessmen, each with their own towers, Trump and Bloomberg. I am running to defeat Donald Trump. There's nobody I'd rather run against than little Michael, that I can tell you. When Mike Bloomberg was the mayor of New York and Donald Trump a real estate developer, they were much more friendly. Now, not so much. Mini Mike didn't do well last night. I was gonna send him a note saying it's not easy doing what I do, is it? I'm not afraid of Donald Trump. Donald Trump's afraid of me. Next year, we can have a leader who brings people together. Bloomberg jumped into the Democratic race late, and this week will be his test. A White House beset by lies, chaos, and corruption. Boom or bust. He's churned out hundreds of millions of dollars worth of TV ads and social media flooding America. A successful entrepreneur, Mike built a business with 20,000 employees. He's a disruptor, and for a while, it seemed to pay off. But political headwinds inside the party have turned into a hurricane. We are a democracy, not an oligarchy. You're not going to buy this election. He doesn't need people. He only needs bags and bags of money. The Democratic presidential debate. Then there was the first debate. Disastrous. I'd like to talk about who we're running against. A billionaire who calls women fat broads and horse-faced lesbians. And no, I'm not talking about Donald Trump. I'm talking about Mayor Bloomberg. He took a drubbing on the private agreement some women signed with his company, keeping their complaints quiet. None of them accused me of doing anything other than maybe they didn't like the joke I told. And let me just... And One of the things people say is, look, Bloomberg's a billionaire. People aren't going to vote for a billionaire in this race. The election is a referendum on Trump. Political columnist John Ellis says Trump's $3 billion is trounced by Bloomberg, worth an estimated $60 billion, and he's ready to use it. Well, he's 78 years old. He doesn't want the obit to read, and then he lost. He wants the obit to read, and then he won. <laughs> so I suspect he'll spend whatever it takes to win. And Trump, how is he viewing Mini Mike? They're terrified because of the money. I mean, it, it, you know, if you're going to get out, spend six to one, and you're Trump, you know, you're terrified. You should be. I mean, they say that they're not, you know, of course, but they're terrified. He took charge, becoming a three-term mayor. Mike Bloomberg is running partly on his record as New York City mayor. Josh Levy and Haina Just Michael are supporters. Haina is a campaign volunteer. I think he's the candidate that can bring people together and not make them more divisive. And this country is kind of tightly wound right now. We're on the right shoulder in a gravelly ditch right now. And what we need to do is get back to the middle of the road where it's safe and drivable but not drive to the other side of the road and just end up in the left shoulder and gravelly ditch. Josh, do you think that he is a candidate that could attract disaffected Republicans? Absolutely. I think only Mike Bloomberg can carry a significant whack of the Republican votes. People who are disillusioned and disaffected and disgusted by Donald Trump and his policies and who feel that the Republican Party has left them. But to win, Bloomberg also needs the African-American vote. He's opened a campaign office here in Harlem and produced targeted ads. For hundreds of years, Americans systematically stole black lives, black freedom, and black labor. But he has a big debt to pay. As mayor, he endorsed a policing practice called stop and frisk, granting police powers to target black and Latino communities. His words at a conference back in 2015 were recently leaked out. You've got to get the guns out of the hands of the people that get killed. And the way she got the guns out of the kids' hands is to throw them against the wall and frisk them. Last November, at the Christian Cultural Center in Brooklyn, Bloomberg tried to make amends. Let's give a warm CCC welcome to our former mayor, Michael Bloomberg. Reverend Alfonso Bernard is an influential church leader and has known Bloomberg for more than 20 years. He was a little apprehensive because he didn't know how he would be received. Thank you, everyone. And yet he wanted 
to be sincere. He wanted to be received as authentic. And we eroded what we had worked so hard to build. Trust between police and communities. Trust between you and me. Did he explain the timing? Did he try to defend that it wasn't anything no. to do with running for president? Look, the time is suspect. People will have to interpret it, interpret it on their own. I realized back then I was wrong, and I'm sorry. What was the response? It was a warm, respectful reception, because my congregation is taught, OK, we can forgive, but what are you going to do about it? How are you going to make amends? Because this is what people of color want to know. You're sorry, now prove it. He has the opportunity to do that. So would they vote for him? Well, you know, at the end of the day, blacks are going to have to decide who's the greatest threat, Michael Bloomberg or Donald Trump. Jim McLaughlin, a Republican strategist, worked on Bloomberg's bid for mayor. And he says Bloomberg's walk back on stop and frisk looks weak. He looks like a flip-flopper, and he looks like one of your typical politicians who's just doing and saying things to get votes. His current client is Donald Trump. He's polling for campaign 2020. The whole idea of a billionaire businessman trying to buy the Democratic primary when, who's basically, he got rich on Wall Street. I think he's not crazy leftist enough to win the Democratic primary right now. Going into Super Tuesday, it's Bernie Sanders who has the clear momentum, and the race is getting nasty. At Bloomberg's campaign offices, vandalism and graffiti. I've been in North Carolina four times since we launched our campaign a few months ago. Campaigning in North Carolina on the weekend, with no delegates yet, Bloomberg faces a long climb up. Do you not think that at some point the Democrats will say, we're so keen to beat Donald Trump, we'll go with a guy, we'll hold our nose and go with a guy like Bloomberg? Let me tell you something. There will be a civil war inside the Democratic Party. You see... You started to say there will be a civil war. Do you think... Oh, I, I think the, the Bernie Sanders folks are already talking about if they steal this from Bernie, they're not going to show up and vote. I was the mayor of the largest most populous city. Mike Bloomberg's money helped vault him this far. His second debate was better, but just. I'm the one choice that makes some sense. I have the experience, I have the resources, and I have the record. He'll have to post a win or come second in one of the states this week to even hope of competing with his New York nemesis, Donald Trump. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, New York.